Hey, today I'm going to be reacting to Ricky Gervais. Uh, he had a conversation with Russell Brand about atheism, morality, God. So it's very interesting. Let's just dive into it and see whether it makes sense or not. But you're right. There's a huge difference between spirituality and something to the south that gets you through, that you that you want to you know the reason, you want to connect, all those things. I feel all those things with, without the belief in a God. He's uh, basically talk, saying that spirituality is something different um, and religion is something different. But how do you get spiritual? How can you get spiritual without religion? I mean, you can just make up your own religion at that point. Essentially, religions are codified spiritual uh, practices. Uh, religion is the next step from spirituality. Everybody has spirituality. <clears throat> he has no problem with that. But once it becomes codified, then he has a problem with it because it suggests that there's God. There's this omnipresent being. If God exists, then of course there's a codified way of living life <laughs> according to God. Uh, so you can't be just feeling spiritual forever. Um, I mean, it's a very good idea, but it doesn't make sense because spirituality should lead to religion. Because through religion is how you get closer to God. How else are you going to get closer to God? But meditating or just walking in nature, those things are good, but they do not get you closer to God because you don't know what God wants, what this entity wants. Religion is something else. Religion... Religion basically says you you want to get into heaven. I know I know him. You just got to do this shit for me, mm. and we're cool. Obviously, if you study religions, you see they are not equal, and they are not the same. And basically, each one of them follows up on the previous one. Usually, they all have the same message. These things. So the Torah, the Jews, the, the Christians, the Muslims. And if you look at the religions, you can make sense of it. And, I mean, I'm religious. For me, Islam makes sense because it makes sense of other religions. Why there are differences in religion is because it was revealed during different times and to different types of people. And so those people then took those revelations, made them their own. And as a Muslim, I believe there was a final revelation. Re religion is always the same thing, just communicated differently. Everything that's ever started was, was, was written by usually a man with an agenda. So if they had an agenda, that would mean they would benefit from it. But when you look at all the people who were part of writing or, you know, being uh, people who brought forward the scripture or were these sort of prophet guys, they all had terrible lives. Like they all had very difficult lives and people hated them. The governments hated them. Um, everybody was against them in the society. They had a small group of people who trusted them and believed in them. And then the religion grew. But in the beginning, or when they started to convey the message, they always had major problems. And it's always like that with any sort of religion. So to imply that you have an agenda because you can get benefit from it, it doesn't make any sense. Because how can I get a benefit from a religion if I brought, bring revelation to my society and they cast me out? So now I'm poor and hungry and I have to live in the desert. Or I have to get out and go to different city or different country to, to migrate. Like, how is that making my life better? What's, going, what's my agenda here? It's no coincidence that if you're born in America, you're probably Christian. If you're born in India, probably a Hindu. It yeah, but that's not a problem. Like, you're born in a country. I was a Christian. You're born in India. You're a Hindu. Uh, you're born in... Mm, Afghanistan, you're Muslim. So that's true. But you still have to analyze if your religion is true. So even if you're a Hindu, of course, you're culturally, your whole family is Hindu, my whole family is Christian. And at some point I said, hey, do I actually believe this? And I became an atheist. And then, hey, do I actually believe in atheism? <laughs> Does it actually make sense? And then when you do research again, you find out, hey, I was actually wrong and I'm, I'm going to convert to Islam because that makes the most sense out of all the worldviews atheism including and agnosticism and so each and every one of us has a responsibility to do this research why is it a problem to assume that one of those religions is correct because they are not equal as we established religions are not equal so the hinduism is not equal to islam and islam is not equal to christianity they all have different level of verification falsification methods and all those stuff and different level of message actually different way of looking at the revelation so if you analyze them, you'll see the differences and you'll be able to make your own conclusion. So if you start saying to me, I, I know um, I love this prophet or that prophet. And I love God. I go, good, 
fine, yeah. And I do this and I believe it. Oh, great, yeah, put it. And I think we should throw homosexuals off buildings. Well, no. I <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about this. Uh, I don't think anyone is throwing homosexuals out of any buildings. But uh, if you want to talk about morality, then I'm all for it. Let's look at the morality from the atheistic perspective, which doesn't actually exist because there is no base in morality. Why is homosexuality good? Why is it not good? Like, why was it 30 years ago not good? Like, how is this changing based on society? Well, if society decides that, I don't know, now incest is okay, then you're going to be okay with it. So probably not. So then what is your moral standard? You don't have any. You don't have any. You just adopt anything that society tells you. Religion tells you specific moral standards that give you grounds and you don't deviate from that. So homosexuality is one example and all the other ones, right? And so where does morality come from? So in religion, morality comes from the source, from the God who knows the truth. So that's pretty objective. From atheistic perspective, it's subjective and it comes from whatever, society. It can change, it's fluid. So there's no kind of like way of finding the truth. It's always evolving and it doesn't evolve further. It can evolve. It, it doesn't have to progress. So like maybe 200 years ago, people were much more moral than they are now when it comes to maybe the family life or something like that. And we can see example like Nazi Germany, which was just a few decades ago. They didn't quite make it through morality, right? They, they pretty much uh, destroyed a, a group of people um, just because of an, of, an, of an idea. So, and they were much more involved. Thousands of years ago went by and they still did this horrible thing. So is morality growing with time? I don't know. The civilization progresses with time, but morality doesn't progress. Morality either goes somewhere or it stays where it should be staying. So In the invention of lying, when my character invents religion he does it because he can't stand his mum's fear of death and and i remember when my mum was dying if she asked me i was thinking i was gonna lie i was like yeah that probably is because it's that so he's talking about fear of death and that's great like i would love to explore that because of course when you experience death you get uh, you start questioning your purpose in life he told his mom maybe it's good and he thinks it's like for weak people religion but if we look at one of the strongest people ever these are religious people usually, like Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. Uh, all these people have faith in God. And it's not from a weak place at all. It's from the place of strength. It's from the place of finding the truth. Because you look at actual revelations. You don't just skip through them. You study the, the texts or you, you practice the religion and you see that this is probably more uh, in line with how the world was created than whatever atheism is telling us or naturalism. So it's not like this concept of like religion is for weak people. It's very strange. Like religion is for people like very, it's for, it's a difficult process. Like, like majority of society doesn't want to think about those questions. Religious people all the time, they think about death. So the religious people are the ones who go deep in, uh, into the life and they think about what's going to happen in the afterlife. So they, everything they do is in accordance to what's going to happen on the day of judgment or on those things. Technically, atheism doesn't even mean uh, you you don't believe in God. It means that, it's, sorry, it, you believe there's no God. It means that you just haven't found God yet. You, you know, there's no evidence. And that that is true. Yeah. It's, you know. All right. There's no evidence. So let's look at what do you think evidence is. If we use inductive logic or deductive logic or... Uh, whatever principles that exist in mathematics, I can give you some pretty rational arguments from probability for the existence of God. I mean, they are not going to be uh, based on something like, oh, I see an angel coming down right now, or I see whatever, I see God. Like, you're not going to have those evidences because that's empirical, it's impossible to do. Uh, but you, I can prove to you through rational arguments that there has been a cause that caused all the other causes. If you want to go there, let's go there. And that's pretty good evidence. That's actually much stronger evidence than anything scientific or evidence-based uh, because that can change through new evidence. Logic cannot change. It's always there. Cool. And I've explained this many times that technically I'm an agnostic atheist because one deals with knowledge and one deals um, with belief. So... No one knows. If we agree that, that no one knows, we're all atheists. 
All right, so he's saying if we agree that no one knows, we're all atheists. But if we use inductive logic, we can assume, we can not assume, we can 100% know some principles. And there we can then compare it and know that for sure, at least we can agree that ha there has been uh, uh, a cause which caused everything. So your premise that no one knows, it's not really valid because no one knows only if, if you haven't really studied. What do you think? And believers say, I think there is a God. And atheists think, I don't think there is a God because I, I haven't got any evidence yet. So what is evidence? There are signs, there are messengers, there are revelations you can see here. And then there are logical principles, which are not religious. We can use both and determine uh, strong, strong evidence. People even say to me, um, if someone proved there was a God, would you believe? It wouldn't even be belief, it would be knowledge. You know, it would also be the greatest. It would be knowledge. Yeah, that's exactly, that's the point of faith. You have belief in the unseen, but the belief is based on solid foundation, is based on knowledge. The knowledge is based on the logic. If I say that I had to have a grandfather and I never seen him, but I say I had to have the grandfather because I exist. So by definition, the, the grandfather had to exist. Or if I say all men are mortal, Socrates was a man, therefore he's immortal. Those are logical arguments we can all follow and there's no way this can be wrong. The same principles I can use to, to justify the, the cause or the, the cause for the universe and everything like that. So A good Christian or a good Muslim or a good Jew or whatever is someone who does all the good bits in that holy book and ignores the bad bits. And I say, if you already know right from wrong, you don't need the book. How do you determine what's good and bad? We just established you have no moral ground or determining anything. So. If homosexual behavior is bad, then they are doing good. If you claim homosexual behavior is good, then they are doing bad. So it's your subjective projection of your values onto a, a system of thought which is not going to change. What is good in Islam? What is bad? Like, how do you determine that if you have no moral foundation? You just go by whatever. Uh, I don't like this. Well, it doesn't matter what you like. Like your morality has no base like you it doesn't matter if you believe if you agree with something is good or bad like no one actually agrees in this world what's good or bad there are some basic things like we know we shouldn't kill people and we shouldn't do this but otherwise it's all fluid yeah. oh yeah you've mentioned we already know what's good and bad you already know what's good and bad so you don't need a book to tell you that well, that's the problem you don't know what's good and bad like i used to be an atheist and I, what i thought is good is now <laughs> I thought there's no problem watching porn and uh, masturbating. I think that's, that's normal. It's, it's no work. I'm not harming anyone. And now I feel so guilty about those things. I feel tremendous amount of shame and my moral standard has moved because I'm a religious person now. So of course, you, what you think is good now because you, you're not uh, religious is completely different than what a practicing Christian or practicing Muslim or practicing Jew believes. Um, why don't they have internet and they don't watch porn or why don't they in, indulge in these uh, uh, in, uh, in alcohol because we know there are some consequences from that behavior which you as an atheist don't agree with because you don't see those consequences as harmful and we see them as harmful not to believe in God I, I used to but now I've thought about it and I, I feel like I don't need a god um i feel like i don't need a god yeah that's what i felt as well but it's not up to you what you feel at some point you have to make sense of this world so how did the universe begin does it make sense it was a multiverse does it make sense there was a big bang with no cause does it make sense it was random it was created from nothing all these things you have to answer uh, why is there evil in the world what what's happening after i die like that's how you get to god it's not like i don't feel i need a god well yeah you can feel like that if you ignore all those questions yeah that's possible uh, but the, the the thing that i really object to is people assuming that you can't be a good person i think you can be a very good person as an atheist i know a lot of them and so i don't think you need to be religious to be good because i know there are some horrible muslims horrible christians around but i do believe overall the religion is by by miles gonna give you a higher moral standard than whatever you find in atheism or anywhere else so then therefore by definition you'll be good moral person there are some statistics i can prove that as well the amount of donations or charities done by religious people outweighs tre tremendously the amount of charities by non-religious people because it's obliged on a christian and it's even compulsory in islam to pay your 
uh, percentage of salaries. There are good atheists and bad atheists. There are good Christians and bad Christians. And a God has never changed that. He's determining good and bad. We're always coming back to that. You have no moral foundation because you don't know what's good and bad. Like, how do you know what's good and bad? I want to know where your morality comes from. How do you determine something is wrong? Something smoking a cigarette, maybe that's good for you. Maybe I think of that. I look at that and I think that's horrible. So who knows? <laughs> if you don't have religion, whatever religion, if you don't have that, then nothing is good or bad. Everything goes. I can do anything because it's just social construct we agreed on that this is bad, this is good, rape is wrong, incest is wrong, but homosexuality is good, transgender is okay, but then pedophilia is not good, but it can change maybe with time. This is what we agreed on, but there's no like foundation for this stuff. It's, it's maybe John Locke principle of no harm, but that doesn't even help in this case because there's harm to society. So I get it. It doesn't, this is not me go, it, it, it works both ways. You shouldn't judge people by their beliefs. You should judge them mm. by their actual behavior. I agree. All religions are for behavior. Like if you memorize the Quran and you are a horrible person, it doesn't help you. You need to put it in practice. Christian, you need to practice your Bible. So it's that that's true. Like you, it's all about behavior. It's all about behavior. It's not about how long your beard is or how much hijab you wear. Uh, it's all behavior, how you act. 90% of religion is your relationship between people and God. So I agree with that, but I don't agree that you don't need religion. You know, you know, right and wrong. You know, some people believe the right thing, but don't do the right thing. And I, I just think, I feel I don't need it. I just don't need a structured guidebook outside at, you know, my, my own morality and morality. Yeah, but again, my own morality. So I come up with, I think porn is okay. I can watch it. So I can adjust my morality. You see how, how, how crazy that gets? You can do anything if you take this framework to extreme. That's the problem. Morality is relative and not absolute. And It's relative for you. It's absolute for us. I put a joke in Afterlife where cats bothering me. And she says, uh, where did it all come from? Somewhat from nothing. And uh, I go, well, uh, uh, where did it all come from then? Go, God made it. I go, okay, where did God come from? She went, he's always been around. I go, this is, this is actually pretty good. Like he got to the, to, the, to the crooks of it. So yeah, if we take this approach that you just did, like who made this? God made this. Okay, where did God come from? Well, he was always been around. And he just throws his hands and say like, okay, that's it. Like how, like that's somehow some crazy idea. Uh, if you do not establish an eternal being, let's say in this argument, you will have infinite regress. So let's think about this Ricky together. If I say this thing was made by, I don't know, some, someone and he was made by something and that and it just goes forever until we reach a point where, well, where, where, was, where did that come from? And then I say, God, you say, not God, well then let's go further with your logic. So then it goes, okay, where did that come from? Where did that come from? It goes forever. And what you realize is you will have infinite regress. Now Google that because I'll educate you. Infinite regress is actually impossible. It uh, suggests that there's such a thing as infinity, which from mathematics and from different philosophical like fields you can study, you, you will understand that um, actual infinity, not potential, but actual infinity, does not exist in reality in any way, shape, shape or form. And it doesn't exist even in mathematics, actual infinity, because it produces contradictions. G let me give you an example. How much is infinity plus one? Infinity. How much is infinity? Infinity. How much is infinity uh, times two? Still infinity. So the, the result is the same, even though the variables changed. And there's so many examples I can give you in mathematics or in different arguments. So when he's saying that, yeah, God made it and who made God, he was, he was there forever. That's actually a necessary being. It's a necessary condition. Because if you do not have an eternal, uncreated thing, then you come to this infinite regress or you come to okay god who made god another god who made god another god the same thing with the multiverse who made this universe another universe and you have billions of universes and you actually are going to use the infinity principle in this sense so you will apply like you know it goes forever but 
hold on a second, if this goes forever, then there would be no beginning. Can we agree to that? So in infinity, there's no beginning, there's no end. But yet, we are here in this point in time, and we know the universe had a beginning. It had Big Bang. So you cannot say that uh, this is somehow crazy. This is actually the only logical conclusion that there is an eternal cause which caused the uh, temporary effect, which is the universe. There's no other way around it, and I want to be proven wrong. But this is how I use just logic to prove to you a, a basic principle. Now, we can get more in-depth if you want. Uh, you dismissing that premise, like, oh, that's, that's dumb because it talks about, like, eternal, like, that doesn't exist. But you using the same logic to establish, like, no, there's infinity because you didn't go there, right? That, that's the contradiction, right? So you actually need that thing there. I think, um, apart from people wanting there to be some sort of um, divine justice because you know, that would be great. Good people would be rewarded and bad people yeah, would be brilliant. punished. That's brilliant. It. It's all okay, about justice it, it at the end of the day. Like that. You, know, you only have to look at um, uh, uh, you know, children in Africa being born with cancer. And, you know, we, we know that's not... We know mysterious ways isn't an explanation. Okay. Uh, he's making a now emotional argument for the problem of evil. If there is a child with AIDS in Africa, uh, what, so you're assuming God only creates good things, like it's only supposed to be good. But how can you have good without bad, actually? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, again, we're coming to the conundrum with the morality here. Th this doesn't make anything wrong with the concept of divine justice, because you're using this world to justify the suffering of someone. This We're seeking the answer. Why are we here? Um, I think we think that, hold on, well, it's too good. It's too good to be chance. It's, everything's perfect. Well, it seems that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a design argument. Yeah. He actually just exactly made a case for fine-tuning of the universe. It is perfect. It is the, we have the ozone layer and all these things. Everything is not random. There is a, an order in the universe. Now, how could there be order if everything was created randomly? If there was a big bang with no cause, with just random nothing explosion? Why is there order in the sense where I have five fingers, this person, because of natural selection, but who drives that? Like who decided those principles? Or why is that principle even there of natural selection? So there, this is the order I'm talking about. How can order come from nothing? Like. Does that make logical sense? The idea of death is, is horrible. What, you'll never exist again? What was the point? You just got there. That's how you get to nihilism. That's, that's your worldview. We're not special, but we are lucky. We do exist. It's I think of it, it's like a holiday. We don't exist for 13 and a half billion years. Then we, we, we explode into this mass, this electronic blob. So 13.5 billion years, the universe was just kind of like cooking. And then sudden, suddenly something happened. Life just, just appeared of nowhere with no life. Suddenly life, how could life appear? How could consciousness evolve from random nothingness? From star blowing up some, uh, some particles, how can you form consciousness? What? Why are we here? Well, um, I mean, it, 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 not even the how, but why. Well, to live your life to the fullest and not, and not hurt anyone. To you're come up, coming up with things, but somebody can say, no, I, I want to live my life to, to do something else. Uh, somebody might say another idea. And so you never have a like, conclusion, like what is the meaning? You just come up with, it, with, with your own thing. And the problem is you're always enjoying this world. You're trying to use the, the amount of time you have here to, to extract as much as pleasure as you can and because you know you will die. But as religious people, we put restrictions on ourselves and we know like, hey, this is just a test. We will enjoy it. But and eventually there will come a point where we will be forever in some way or shape or form live. Um, and so we know this is not, we are not here to enjoy this, this, this world. We are here to participate in it and create, let's say, good deeds. But that's about it. To, to experience everything all the reasons all the obvious reasons you know love wine dogs learning um all these great things that you can do every minute of every day for alive and then you then you check out you go i'm done thanks and it's and it's done and it's beautiful but you can do those things and then you will still die so what was the point was it beautiful i don't know guys let me know what you thought about this Thank you so much for checking out this video and subscribe below on 
more of these reactions. Let me know if you want to see more reactions like that. I'd be very happy to break it down because it's very easy content to make. See you later.